All right, in this video, uh, before I make the next series of videos on weather bar graphs and weather line graphs that you see right here, I'm just going to, uh, this is something I'm going to release on Dark Skittles probably Friday of this week. I'm going to do a little bit more tweaking to it. But um, the next series of videos I'm going to be doing, I'm going to show you how to make this stuff. Uh, this, what we have here is a three day forecast with maximum and minimum temperatures and we have our line graphs. But if we tap this button down here, we can switch over to a bar graph where the red goes up to our max. And then we had the green in here that shows our min. Now you may notice that's not really that tall because the minimum set to 39. We can actually adjust these numbers and everything is going mathematically is going to stay the same, but it's going to look a little bit different. I want to show you how to do that in this video. So for those of you that do pick up this component, this will be a component that I will release this Friday on Dark Skittles. I want to make sure you understand how to switch that stuff. We can change all these colors. We can uh, make the bars wider. We can change the size of the lines, the thickness. And then also if we tap this button again, we can combine the bar and the line graphs together. Uh, something else that we can do too as a perk, um, if you have the Weather Underground API, which is free, if you tap this button over here, we can switch over to a 12 hour forecast. Um, just showing temperatures at least over the next 12 hours and we can tap this button here and we can switch this is the bars and the lines um, we can switch to just lines or we can go to just bars so this is more of an intro of what we're going to be doing now the 12 hour one it's a lot of math going on in that it's some of the same repetitive math but it is a lot of math going on in all this stuff especially for the line pieces but the bar graphs are not as bad but they're still kind of tricky but we're going to be covering that in a future tutorial. For those of you that want to pick this up off of Dark Skittles, let me show you some other things that you can customize in KOWP with the global variables. So here we are inside of KOWP. The component is going to be called 3-Day 12-Hour Line Bar Precise. Going over to that and going right into its globals, there's a lot of global variables in here. Um, there's a lot of text global variables. You don't have to really mess with any of the text global variables with the exception of one. I'm going to go ahead and show that to you. Now, I'm scrolling and there's a lot of globals in here. Don't feel overwhelmed by this. Like I said, the majority of the text global variables were there for me to use to simplify the length of the formulas that I was making inside of the component to get all these bars and lines to show up. There is one text global variable that you can adjust. What I want you to notice right now is that the, this temperature here, I'm zooming in and I know it's not very clear. It looks just fine on the device, but our max up here is 64 and our min down here is 42. We can adjust these so that maybe we can see a little bit more of our, well, let me show you. Switching over to my three day forecast. Um, notice that green right there, there's not a lot showing um, because the minimum on October the 26th is gonna be 39 and that minimum down there is a 38. So we barely see it. Let me show you how we can see more of that by changing one text global. I lied, there's two text globals. Uh, the two text globals that you're gonna wanna look at are these first two here, three day max and three day min. If we go to three day max and let's just come in here and instead of plus one, let's add, uh, right now it says 74, let's add five to it, which is essentially gonna add four more because I was already adding one. So notice that change to a 78, that's gonna change this top number up here. And then we're gonna come down here to the three day min and I'm gonna set this to minus five. Now notice it's 38, so if I minus five, that's taking away four more, we're down to 34. And now what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to see more of this bar right here. Speaking of seeing more, what we can do, you can adjust all these colors in here. Uh, the background color, let me go ahead and change that real quick. So this is the whole background. Now there's a few things I want you to pay attention to as I change some of this. Some of this is gonna be self-explanatory like the graph thickness if I go back to my line graph uh, this is going to adjust the thickness of the lines as you can see those are getting thicker if I go to my bar graph this is going to adjust the width of the bar so maybe you want those bars a little bit wider the dot size that will change the size of the dots on your line graph so if I come here and I bump that dot size up a little bit as you can see the dots get bigger padding this padding here just the one that's called padding there's two paddings inside of this component a uh, padding and an h padding this padding here will adjust the padding of the three-day forecast so i can bring these lines and dots closer and uh, notice the lines are still staying the way they should that that was the crazy math i had to figure out um, as i was making this thing but you can adjust the padding to make those closer or farther apart the graph height what i want you to pay attention to here 
graph height, this number global, is going to adjust uh, see this line here and this line here. It's going to adjust this piece only. It's not going to change the whole card. There is a number global variable for that as well. Let me show you how that works. Suppose you want the, the graph piece here inside of these lines to be a little bit taller. So I'm going to bump graph height up a little bit. But as I'm doing that, notice it is uh, starting to get in the way of like up here and it's starting to overlap right here. Well, if we scroll down a little bit more, um, these are all our global variable colors that you can play around with skipping over all these text globals. Don't worry about the test stuff. And if we come down here to whole height, whole height will allow you to just this height of the whole piece without affecting the height of the graph. So those are two separate pieces that allow you to get the spacing that you want between the actual graph and the card itself. I hope that makes sense. Again, don't worry about the test things that you see here, but I guess one more global to look at, or maybe there's a few more, but stat thick, that's the stationary. The stationary lines you see right here, we can, uh, you know, you can make them thicker if you want, or you can completely take them away just by clicking down to zero. But I, I think keeping a little bit of uh, some lines there does help. And again, you can change the colors of all of those pieces. And I think that just about covers it. A lot of text globals in here, that just makes the math easier to type in our functions. Oh yeah, and if we go to our 12 hour forecast, assuming you're using weather underground, you can change the H padding. You can make the hours farther apart. Obviously that's taking it off the screen, but you can bring them in closer together as well. So, um, you know, however big or small you wanna make this. The only thing is down here, maybe you might wanna take away some of these text items that you see because that can get a little bit cluttered. And then obviously you can change the color of your hours as well. So we will actually start the tutorial piece to this. Um, I plan on making the video this Friday for at least covering uh, some of these text globals that you see. We won't cover um, the, the hour forecast. I'm not gonna be doing, cause as you can see the hour one has a ton of text globals, but I will be doing the three day forecast with you and hopefully give you some uh, pointers on how to maybe make a four day or a five day or six day forecast or what have you. We'll cover the bar graph first and then we'll come and do the line graph second because the line graph is the one that requires the most amount of math. And there you have it. Uh, again, this is going to be released this Friday on Dark Skittles. Make sure you pick it up. If you have any questions, leave a comment in this comment section below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.